Ed, are we okay? Record. We're on. What are you looking at? We're recording. We got a hot mic here. Do you want? Uh, not much. I can oh do yeah, you know what? You. It's right in my way. It's it's blocking me. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, look at you! You've yeah, done this yeah. before. He, best boy to the rescue. <laughs> I am the best boy. Look at you throwing the lingo around. Where's Sorry. the gaffer? Gaffer. <laughs> Where's the gaffer? No one to this day knows exactly what a gaffer is. We talked about really? that earlier. We talked about that. We talked about the that. complete lack of gaffer knowledge. We we talked about that. There are gafferologists. We know what a but is, gafferologists. <laughs> yes, you know it's a, it's a it's a long degree. It's longer than being a doctor to become a gafferologist. Wow. Yeah. But you probably didn't know that. Could you be an intergaphrologist? Inter oh, that's a specialized field. That's what I was going to say. Yes. That's like you work just on inside shots, right? That's right. You move lights without even having to touch them when you're a gaffer intro. I can't even say it. It's so complicated. <laughs> Gaff gaffer gaffer intrologist? Well, you'd be a telekinetic gaffer intrologist at that. Hey, wow. playing guitar has got nice. nothing to do with it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> guitar. <laughs> Wow. It's all rhythm, though. That's that right. Way. Gotta have yeah. the rhythm. Right. It's all rhythm. Yep. The rhythm method. Wait a minute. Wait, this, this guy's not This work. is going south quick. This got sexy. Yeah, it's sexy. Yeah, if you're into the song. Oh, the wow. mellow tones oh. of Brian Stupski. This is why you're an actor. <laughs> Wait, you're looking at you could actually play Chip Foos in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hat. Now that I've lost I some weight. Swear yeah. to God. The hat and the weight loss. There you go. Okay, this yes. is going to be great. It's, it's, it's all based on fan movie. fiction. It's all a fan In fiction. A world based. It's pretty awesome. Where cars are built by hand. Only one man can build them Foos style. <laughs> Chip. Chip Foos. Nice. We need him to do an intro. You have to start with <laughs> below 32. It always starts with in a world. It does. It has always. to. Always in a world. Or in a place. Or in a, place. Or in a, a town. In a town. In a time. In a time. I always like in a time. In a time I kind of like. In a time. In a time when cars were boring. Chip Foose saves the world. We could go back to that ma'am thing. That'd be a whole different episode. <laughs> then you'd have to in bleep it. You'd have to bleep like every 30 seconds. It'd be... <laughs> Stuff it's the alternate universe, so it's Biff Foose. See? Oh. So Biff? Biff Foose? Biff Foose. Is that his, like, dumb hillbilly cousin? <laughs> <laughs> I build rat rods. He <laughs> <laughs> rat rods. <laughs> and they've got, like, like orange pinstripe with Foose on it. <laughs> <laughs> Uses a stick welder. Yeah. Uh, he puts Foose on coat with hanger. a stick welder. With wire with coat hangers. <laughs> Hey, check it out. I put this mailbag box on as an air cleaner. Ain't that different? I got to have it back at four. The mail's coming. <laughs> or at least park in the, on the sidewalk. <laughs> Chip Foose isn't here, is he? Oh, shit. No, yeah, not at all. Not at I'm, at I'm all. a sensitive man. I'd hate for something to happen to me. This is this is where we go on Mori Povich. Bring out Chip. <laughs> Steps you from behind are the, the, the father. father. Is, is he your baby's daddy? <laughs> no. You are the father. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is he your baby's mama? Wait a minute. Baby daddy. How does mama? that work? He would, baby mama. He'd be the baby daddy. Daddy. He'd be the baby daddy. I just had a baby and I don't know who the mother is. <laughs> it's horrible. I'm broken up about it. <laughs> Still not sure. Anyway. Uh, should we do something with this? Do it, man. Do an hey, intro. You're driving. Even I'm if we use all this before, it's still going to have an intro. So. <laughs> oh, we he's going to run out of digital tape over nah, here. Nah, we're, we're fine. Let's do this <laughs> We're then. just fine. Uh, ready? Okay. Whenever you are. I oh. thought we were rolling. Oh, well, yeah. well, we're, <laughs> we're using rolling. some of that. We're recording. It's all good. Night. <laughs> all right. Uh, welcome to the Round 6 Podcast. Uh, I'm Brian. I'm Alex. I'm Brad. I'm Jim. Hey. Sorry, didn't mean to step on your Wait, break. Wait, you got to get an intro. So you messed the whole thing up. Oh, we'll do it again then. Yeah. Boo. Oh, wait. It's, 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 yeah. There you go. Take five. Okay, take 12. Watch, should I look at the camera? Should I be like, no. Welcome to the round six pot? No. Okay. I want you to edit the shit out of this. That's right. Be all just rough. Welcome to the round six podcast. So I shouldn't talk while you're doing this, right? No, no what we'll do, I will go. He's going to, he's going to introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, be professional, man. <clears throat> what we'll do is it'll go Ryan, Brad, Alex, 
and then we'll come up with some name for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some name. Whatever. Hopefully yeah. it'll be my own. Uh, preferably, do you prefer Jim Wait, or James? I'll give you an an alias to use. Okay. And then, you'll, and then you'll feign happiness to be <laughs> oh, here. See? So, feign yeah. happiness. That's right. I'll try, I'll, wait, I'm a method actor, so let me. Let oh, me there think. you go. Let me think. Okay, I'm ready. I mean, for Jim or James? Uh, you know, for this probably James, but when we're just talking, Jim is fine. Okay, so go. What's your motivation? Oh, to make money. There you go. Okay. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. James in here to lay pigment and get paid. <laughs> lay pigment. Oh, that sounds dirty some way. You like that? Oh, we're going with that. I like it a lot. Pigment. We're going with that. Okay, so do the intro. It can't be the Sultan of... The Sultan of Sable? Ooh. Sable. Oh, hey, I'm in. All right. The punter of paint? The Archibald of acrylic? You're an oil guy. Right? I am a greasy one. Guy. A greasy oil painter? Just a greasy <laughs> one. Let's say greasy painter again. Yeah. Greasy painter. I like the Sultan of Sable. That I do. God, I like good. that. Sultan of Sable's going to go. Flying it, with it. It trips off the tongue a little better than the Sultan of Hog Bristles. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> synthetic brush master. No. Synthetic, synthetic, synthetic brush master. hair. You magnificent bastard, I read your book! He's a member of the Brush Bastards. <laughs> found, found, okay, we're going with that, too. Founding member of the Brush Bastards. Intro. Intro, here we go. You need that, right? Yeah. Every time? Yeah, there's a clap. Brian has the clap. Twice. Hammer dexterously. Welcome to the Round 6 Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Brad. I'm Alex. And with us here, live from the 70th, Grand National Roadster Show is the Sultan of Sable, the founding master of the Brush Bastards, oh. James Owens. Uh, present. <laughs> <laughs> the Brush Bastards, my new car club. That's oh, all yeah. it's yeah. Populate, yeah, The Brush Bastards population. Yep. Wide Sultan of Sable, my new stripper name. Perfect. I gotta admit, that's a great one, dude. I think so. Yeah. Sable. Sable's just such a great name. It's I just think, a good stripper name all I around. Know. I know. I think it really it works. I mean, doesn't matter what your what your leaning is um, gender-wise? No, it's it's gender neutral actually. Sable. Yep. Ooh. We got to come up with a new name for you then. <laughs> Hog well, bristle. Fred Garvin's already taken, so Fred I can't Garvin. use that one. Hog bristle. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know, that's a type of paintbrush. Oh, I was going uh, dirty with it. It was like, hey, uh, oh. we expected that of you though. Well, oh, no, it's yeah. sad. I always goes for the gutter every time. That's, that's where I live. <laughs> Wait. Anyway, does your wife know? <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, it's a loaded question. Oh, so, sir, how is your show going for you, Matt? I know this is a great show. It's early yet, but uh, already meeting a lot of great people. I love this show. I come every year. Uh, if I didn't come to sell, I would be here as a spectator because I just love it. Right now, how many years have you done the show? I did this the first time was probably spring of 2008 was the first show I did. Wow. Yep. I was over in the Suede Palace back when it was, when that meant something. No, I, I mean, it's, it's still great, but that's back when it leaked and it was freaking yeah. freezing all the time. Yeah, and, right. You know, Those were the good days. The good old days. You still couldn't hear anything over there. No. You couldn't have a conversation. The, the rockabilly bands were so loud, oh, yeah. you couldn't oh. even speak to the person next to you. Dude, so But loud. it was exciting so and it was loud. fun. Yep. The smell of freshly laid primer. That's right. Wafting around. It's yep. great. Oh, my God. That, the combination of freshly sprayed primer and pomade. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Which pomade is a new primer. scent I'm coming out with in the fall. Really? That's going to yeah. be fantastic. I oh, like yeah. that. I think it's got limited appeal, but I'm going for it. That's that's how everything starts. I mean, we have very limited appeal. Well, I think you <laughs> just came up with some pomade primer. If you put the primer on, the pomade would last longer. It's true. Oh. But you'd have, to, you'd have to wet sand your head then. Uh, some of those guys, I'm sure they could. I'm sure they could. Some of them shine like they, like they've wet sanded them, yeah. clear coated them. Yeah. We just eliminated an entire potential listener base. No. <laughs> and angered a lot of people. <laughs> it's what we live for. You're gonna hear the thunder of Doc Martin yeah. boots coming from <laughs> <laughs> and vans pitter pattering along. <laughs> <laughs> or or Converse All Stars, yeah. Oh, jeez, yeah. the squeak of Converse All Stars <laughs> <laughs> amidst the patter of the vans and the clunk of the boots. Yes. This could be a Broadway show. This, this is like Stomp's whole new. It's it's Stomp's it's Stomp's uh, less intelligent brother. Yeah. 
<laughs> called uh, Shuffle Along or something like that. <laughs> it's got a big musical shuffle, number at the, the end. Musical. Shuffle Along. What's, yeah, what is worse than a stomp? Sluff. <laughs> a shuffle. A mosey? Sluff. A <laughs> it's mosey. a dance show called Mosey. <laughs> Or promenade. <laughs> <laughs> the pomade promenade. Oh, the pomade promenade. I love that. Yeah, this what a great show this has turned out to be. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to talk about cars at all? <laughs> we, we waited so long to have you on, too. Yeah. I, well, thank you for having uh, me. I appreciate it. I'm glad we found you. I, I mean, we were walking we around. We only live like, what, five minutes from each other? And then we never talk. I'm starting to think you don't love me. It's not that I don't love you. It's it's that I have that piece of paper that says you can't come within fifty yards right, of Jim. Right. So I just and it's still good. I got to tell you, <laughs> I know it doesn't that. expire. That's no shelf. So life. you stay on that side of the table, Mister. Well, that's why we have our buffer zone. Yeah, yeah I'm neutral. Buffer zone. <laughs> I'm Switzerland. <laughs> that's right. You're the Switzerland of the podcast. <laughs> that's right. that's great. Oh my gosh. So let's let's get in a little bit serious though. Uh, your work is mind-blowingly incredible sir thank i mean you. i've always been a fan of your stuff thank you even Appreciate like back that. especially you know first time i think i saw your work was probably right around 2008 it's been a long time and then you, i moved away and kind of quit doing shows for about six years just didn't care oh well i was acting and i it was too hard to be divided and i just was kind of painting for my collectors and not really out showing and seeking new collectors while I was pursuing the acting. I was living back east. Uh, there's a lot of, I was living in East Tennessee and there's a lot of production for acting in Atlanta right now. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's like the new Hollywood. And so I, I worked all the time as an actor, um, you know, still painting, but I got to a point where I was like, well, I can do one or the other at the level I wanted to do it. And I, I chose the painting because I can sleep in my own bed most nights. <laughs> But really, seriously, I'm, I'm being funny, but the acting took me away from home a yeah, lot, and I, I, I didn't like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's not so let, let's let's totally sidetrack that. Let's really, let's get into the acting side because this is the part about you that's always intrigued me. How did you get into um, it? What what was? Well, I worked in advertising in Detroit. I was an illustrator. Right. And but I was constantly meeting with art directors, and once in a while they'd go, "Man, I, I like your voice. Can you do this voiceover for me for this commercial I'm doing or whatever?" You know. And so I kind of dabbled in it and. I was one of those kids in high school that got the leads in the plays and things like that. Oh. Uh, but, but no one ever told me there was money to be made at it. And so when I got out of high school, I just pursued my art, you know. Um, and then I was in my mid-30s, and I was driving along one day, and I heard this radio commercial. And the actor in it was awful, like horrible. And I thought, what the heck, man? I could do that. <laughs> you know, I could be awful. Yeah. <laughs> so, I be so, more awful. so I got a hold of some of my art director friends and I said, how do, how do I go about doing this? You know, and they said, oh, you need a voiceover demo tape and this kind of thing. So I put one of those together, we mocked one up. And uh, every time I would go and take my portfolio out to meet with art directors, I'd say, oh, by the way, I do voiceover work also. And so, uh, I did that, went, met with an art director, gave, gave her my tape. She says, oh, my husband's a director. I'll pass this on to him. And like a week later, the guy calls me up. He's, I, I've got a series of radio commercials I'm doing. So he hired me, and I did like five or six radio commercials with my first job for like a department store in the South. I don't remember the name of it now. but So I, I did five or six commercials, and the guy says, okay, uh, who's your agent? Who should I bill this through? I was like, I don't have an agent. What's an agent? You know? Oh, jeez. Yeah. And so he goes, I, I, I said, who's the best agent in town? He says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to bill this through, you know, XYZ agency. You call them and introduce yourself to them. So I made my agent money before I ever met them. Oh, wow. And she says, okay, well, this is great. You need to come in and introduce yourself to us and meet, meet with us. So I went in and uh, chatted with them. And she says, well, we need, a, we need a headshot and a resume. And at that time, I was really overweight, and I would lost my hair young. And I said to her, I said, well, how much work is there for a bald, fat guy? And she just laughed and said, well, I don't know. Let's, let's find out, you know? Two weeks later, I was eligible for my SAG card Whoa. because I had booked a national commercial for Dollywood. Wow. Believe it or not. Yeah, I was like the dad in, of the family in the wow. Dollywood commercial. Fantastic. And it took off from there. I, I had agents in Atlanta, Nashville, because I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I had agents in Atlanta, Nashville, um, Cincinnati, because all of that's like – within a four hour drive yeah. of, of Knoxville. It was like a wheel hub. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama, I would work down there all the time. Um, and that led from one thing to another. I ended up in Los Angeles, which is where we met. 
when I was living in Los Angeles because I was starting, I started doing these shows. Um, I was acting, but as acting often goes, I wasn't booking any jobs <laughs> in, in, in LA. Starving. Yeah. yeah. And so I took a job as an art director and uh, it, for an entertainment company. And a lot of times those entertainment companies, they, they're around for a few years and they go away. And that's what happened. So I took my unemployment check. By that time, I had been coming to shows in Southern California, car shows, and I'd seen what Keith Wiesner was doing, I'd seen what Tom Fritz was doing, and loved it. You know, I think both those guys, uh, top of their game for what they do, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I thought, you know what? I'm not getting any younger. I want to do this. I want to make prints. I want to make paintings of cars because I've been car crazy since I was, you know, it's in my blood. My grandfather worked for Henry Ford from 1926 to 1966. Oh. My dad retired from Ford. Uh, just cars are in my blood and I've always been in love with cars um, had a bunch of old cars and just decided to start painting and so you know I've been doing a combination of the acting and painting ever since and then just recently in the last couple of years decided to stop the acting and really focus on the painting because like I said I wasn't doing either one at the level I wanted to do them even though I'd had some some good success with the acting and had done some good TV shows and a lot of television commercials which is where the real money is you know <laughs> um, oh, you can always me, learn on our podcast television commercials you know I, I booked a, a Home Depot commercial one time two days work you count the audition and then the shooting it's like 40 grand oh yeah commercials pay, wow. pay really big but then I had the last gig I had I was on the TV show Nashville I had a like a guest starring role on Nashville you know and I made my day rate which was like I don't know it was like under a thousand bucks and then I get these beautiful checks in the mail pardon me residual checks in the mail 10 cents you know <laughs> 17 cents somebody streamed it on Netflix you're like oh, exactly oh. and it's like I'm I like think about that it cost more, it cost more to, make, to, write, to write it and, yeah. and print it and put the stamp on it than it did <laughs> to pay me well I've got to wait to, I've got to wait everybody in the car community needs to do this we need to post your IMDB link okay everything we can find online that somebody can stream that we know you're gonna get paid for everybody go on and oh. I don't care if you watch it stream the hell out of it over and over. I like where over. your head's at. I can help you out with this. Oh, I think man, this is the way we do this. Because then I'll get checks for like $2.50. Think yeah. about this. That'd be awesome. Now it's worth it, right? See? Maybe ah. $2.58. Yeah. So now speaking of TV shows and just in the spirit of things, you were, you did uh, you did that commercial where you played the dad yeah. on Dollywood. Are you guys planning on like a 10-year reunion? 10-year Dollywood you? commercial <laughs> reunion? <laughs> well, you know, we got together for the DVD commentary, but uh, I don't think a reunion is going to happen because quite Director's frankly, cut. quite frankly, some of us can't be in the same room with each other, you know, uh, after I mean, touring and... You know how it goes. Dog ran into a bit of a, bit of a smack problem. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, I just the heroin's out of control with the dogs. I just, I can't do it. Yep. And the log ride? Oh, forget it. <laughs> real. Yeah. The outtakes for that were great, though. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a real ride. gag reel. Yeah. Rule the log ride. And the kid, my ten-year-old son, forty-three-year-old midget. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he had that tattoo like Bugs Bunny's kid. The, that's why. Like, that's why he was in long sleeves. Yeah, Sing Sing, nineteen thirty three. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, it's a rough business. Rough business. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, holy cow! Okay, so, what what was your biggest role? My biggest role. Let's well, see. That's weird because I had a lead in in an independent film that was shown on Stars. But, you know, who knows how many people saw that. But I had small parts in good TV shows. Like, I was on Drop Dead Diva twice, which was a USA show that a lot of girls like. And I, I did Tyler Perry's House of Pain, which was an incredible experience. That that whole organization, you know, the Medea movies, I, I don't care if they're cheesy. I don't care. That organization is incredible. The, the, Tyler Perry's studio and everything. He's got, awesome. a, he's got a whole studio in Atlanta with, like, a New York back street and everything. It's, it's incredible. Dude. Yeah. Well, we're close. We have a we have a backdrop with a brick yeah. wall. You know, yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. It, I, fe I felt like I was Very, in one of the boroughs. Very, which, which one? Let's see if we got this right. The one that this looks like. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. We got to ride across then. the river. Vague enough yeah, for you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one across the river. Yeah. That's... It's, a, it's a numbered street. Oh. 
It, it, there are there were numbers, yeah. There numbered yeah. streets. And, and a couple of, uh, you know, sewer lids and things. Yeah. 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 It, was very, it was very New York. Very nice. Thank yeah. you. That's it's... <laughs> and at the end of this episode, no. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get into acting. You, you've, you've obviously got collectors that are already collecting your work. Yep. So how did that begin for you? Where, how did you... Who was like your first collector? You don't have to um, share names. You could just be like, no, I can share a name. It's this guy from New York, uh, Ron Main. Oh wow, okay. So oh, his, yeah. him and his wife were the first people at when I was here at 2008, the first first uh, Grand National Roadster show I ever did. Him and his wife came into the booth and liked some of my work, and then um, they left. But she snuck back and commissioned me to paint his salt flat racer that him and his brother and. Uh, 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 the name of the other guy the, just flew the, right out of my head. The flat fire car was that what that was? Uh, it's no, the it's orange and white. And I'm sorry, it's been over ten years since I painted it. It's. Uh, Do you remember Maine? what the name of it is? It's well, Potit yes. in Maine. Yeah, Potit Potit Maine. yeah Speed yeah. Demon and Flat Fire. Yeah, Speed yeah. Demon. It was Speed okay. Demon. Speed Thank Demon. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Potit in Maine. Speed Demon. So yeah. I, I did a commission painting of that big oil painting. Uh, he just uh, actually like two weeks ago he sent me this really bitching photo of it in his garage and he's framed it with the rear end of a car like oh, a, wait, like, cool. a, like a fo- like a. 59 Caddy rear end or 57 Chevy, I can't remember, but uh, it's like that's it's in a frame, but it's framed by this back end. It's really oh, cool wow. looking. Way cool. Yeah. Wow. He just came by the booth this morning because I donated a piece to his. Uh, he's doing a charitable auction, so I donated a paper framed paper print for the auction. So go out and bid big on that because it's for charity. Bid big while you're watching. That's right. Episodes that they say. You know, oh. That's right. While they're oh. streaming in the background. Bid, bid, bid. This weekend's going to be a cash cow for I'm you. I you, bro. see this coming. I see this. Milking those cash teats. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's the title of the episode. <laughs> Milking the cash teats. Milking the cash teats. It's perfect. Oh, my God. So, okay, let, let's really back this up then. We're, we're I gonna, was born a poor black child. Outstanding. <laughs> we're going to, I'm just going to like, it, I started to Tarantino it, now we're just going to go kind of all over the place. Um, when did you first discover a love for cars? Oh man, growing up when I I mean just I was a kid and my dad and I would play this game called name that car. So uh, I was born in the 60s, raised in the late 60s and the early 70s. I was a kid and when I was driving around with my dad, there were in those days there were still a lot of 50s cars on the road because yeah. they were only you know 10, 15 years old, right. you know. Right. And so we would play name that car. And of course, my dad could name them all because back then a Buick was looked different than a Pontiac or whatever, you know. And I'm, I was like soaking it up, you know, and trying to learn, you know, because as car guys, we all like to, you know, mansplain to our women, oh, that's a '48 Buick right there, baby. Two of the teardrops. You know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, so when I was a little kid, it was that being born in Detroit, raised in Detroit? Like I said, my grandfather worked for Henry Ford uh, from 1926. Went through Ford Trade School, was a tool and die maker. My brother has retired from GM. My cousins work for GM. My dad retired from Ford. It's just when you wow. grow up in Detroit, it's yeah. just it's in your blood. You yeah. know, yeah. it's like a it's a company town. Like Hollywood is a company town for the movie industry. You know, but uh, and then. You know, I just said, like a kid, I drew like everybody else did, and I would draw these cars that could do everything. Like, it's part like World War II German submarine with the, the jagged thing on the front so you could like ram a Break boat. ice. But it could <laughs> pop up propellers and fly, you know, and. It's like the best. Uh, yeah, and of course it had big fat wheels doing a burnout and all this, you know. But I used to draw these things, and and then when I got out of school, you know, I always drew and painted in, in high school and all, and. And quite frankly, when I graduated high school in Detroit, there were no jobs to be had. The, the, the factories were shutting down. And and uh, so, uh, quite honestly, I was going to go in the military. Uh, but I applied to the Center for Creative Studies and, you know, gave them a portfolio and everything. And uh, I was either going to go in the military or get into the art school. And I happened to get into the art school. So my illustrious military career was not to be. Right. And wow, this would be a whole different podcast. It would be. This would be so bizarre. Yep. And so I went to Center for Creative Studies, and uh, I was hired uh, before I even graduated at an art studio. Detroit was unique. They had these art studios. You'd have, uh, you know, six or a dozen artists on the board servicing um, all the major agencies in town. J. Walter Thompson, W.B. Donor, McCann Erickson, you know, like that. All the big car agencies. So everything I did was car, 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 car. 
I was trained as an airbrush illustrator doing like cutaways of shock absorbers and engine parts and things like that, which wow. is about as fun as watching paint dry. No, but it's, <laughs> you know? it's cool. I see where it'd be a little super monotonous. cool. Yeah. Boring, it was it's monotonous. It's still kind of yeah. cool. But this studio I worked at was so great, and I worked with so many talented people, and they threw so much stuff at you that you had to learn. I mean, I did cartoon work, point of purchase displays, magazine ads, editorial work for magazines. I just, I did everything I was asked to do because you're trying to make a living. Right. And so I found that I loved learning to do all these other techniques, you know. I, I've worked in every technique you can think of uh, just because I had to. And... Uh, Thousands of frames of storyboards for uh, car commercials. Uh, we would do we would do packages of five and six commercials at a time, with wow. you know, you know, fifty frames each, and just crank them out. You know, it was all marker work. Oh, so I, was, I spent my twenties marker high, because you know? <laughs> it, it was like a bullpen. Marker it, was, high. it was like a bullpen with uh, you know uh, just little dividers with all these drawing boards. Just all those fumes. All, <laughs> <laughs> put a marker in, you know? And then back in those days, the markers had bad oh, fumes. Oh, the metal know? ones. Oh, oh, yes. And, and we'd work, you know, 18, 20 hour days sometimes yeah, because yeah. you'd sit around all week with nothing to do and Friday afternoon at 4.30, oh, by the way, we got this storyboard package. Got we got to get done by Monday. Monday. Yeah, Monday. friggin' art directors. I still hate them to this day. <laughs> but uh, no, so that, you know, doing marker work will really hone an artist's skills. Oh, yeah. Because you, you learn how to work fast. You learn how to shade properly. You learn how reflections work on cars and metal. You know, so it was great, great training. And of course, the whole time I was there, all I wanted to do was get the hell out. Yeah. But now I look back on it, you know, 30 years later, and I'm yeah. like, it was the greatest training I'd ever had. And I worked with the funniest people I ever worked with, even in Hollywood. These people I worked with in Detroit were hilarious. We used to laugh, man. And, and the most talented people and generous with their talent. If you were working on something, you didn't know how to solve the artistic problem, some guy would sidle up behind you and go, oh, I've done that. Here, here's what you do. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, oh, it was the greatest that's training fun. ground you could ever yeah, have. That's yeah, cool. Great people. I miss them. I do. Man. Hell of a story, wow, too. Thank so, you. Wow, this is... Thank you. It's all lies. This I made it awesome. all up. No, but it's good. Every, 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 every word was there a lie. You are a great actor. Every word was a lie. No. Oh, jeez. Man. I was just sitting here thinking, I was trying to find a better word that I've been rendered speechless. I'm thinking of Mark. I'm thinking that's, rendered. that sounds really crappy. Rendered. But nice. I don't want to go there, but I draw that out of people. Oh. Yes. They're speechlessness. Wow. That's no. Uh -oh. It's because you're so colorful. Stop me! It's it's wrong. No, stop we're gonna me. keep you going. No, we're gonna stop go. me. I want to go to a point where I you can't just help like pass out. This is gonna be great. <laughs> From double entendres <laughs> and weird crap. I know. Oh my god! So, okay. So what what stops a guy like you then? I, I just imagine somehow that with your your creativity, and at this point you've got a really great artistic technical background. You could have probably taken that and gone into conceptual art in a Hollywood sense, too. So that's a really fine line that kind of drove you one way versus the other. And did you even ever consider going into that side, like, conceptual? I didn't. I did some okay. work for DreamWorks. I did some storyboards for DreamWorks one time. Oh, I like this how every time we bring up anything, it's like an A-list thing. Sorry. Well, no, no, no. it's awesome. Uh, no, actually, dude, I'm, I'm blown I, away I'm making by this. it sound like, bigger than it was. It was, it was oh. not a lot of work. I, I didn't do, like, a whole movie or anything. I, I helped out with some storyboards on a movie. Um, mm. But it just, it wasn't work that I wanted to do. I wanted to paint what I wanted to paint, you know? And that's, that's a big, sets an artist free when you're bound by what a corporation wants you to do, which there's always great money attached to that, but it's, can, it can hammer on your soul a little bit, you know, when you're just selling your talent and when you're a gunslinger and you're just selling your gun around town and, you know, when you really want to kill people, you want to kill. So, that's you know. Right. <laughs> I'm not a contractor. If you ever, <laughs> no, I used to be, but I've had a, you know, my soul can't take it anymore. If you ever it's write somebody gunning for you, you got to sit with your back to the wall. That's right. And you never want aces and eights. No, no, no. no. That's a dead artist hand it's right a there. Dead artist hand. That's right. It's got range. <laughs> Doubt. But, uh, oh my god. He, he we don't, we don't want aces and eights. We want tacos. Let's go get tacos. He's sitting over here. He looks so disgusted. Like, who the hell brought this guy on the show? <laughs> <laughs> or do you always look that way? I always look this way. Pretty much. Yeah. He's <laughs> he's our angry. Dejected look, you know, hating life. Yeah, that would be me. What? <laughs> you have no reason to hate life. Did I even answer your question, by the way? <laughs> you did. You, you yeah. did perfectly, Addict. So it was just in my head for some reason, I was like developing this whole thing where, wow, his life could have gone, you know, in a world right. where, you know. <laughs> and, and, he's and he's tired of killing people. So we know that about him. Right. So, yeah. okay, so 
wow, this took a really nasty turn. No, I really wanted to explore what I have to say. What what do I have to say? You know, do I have anything to say as far as creating images go, say. you know? But you don't know that when you're starting. You think you've got something to say, but you don't know. You don't know how people are going to respond to it, you know? Yeah. You just you try to paint something that you think is cool and hope other people like it, you know? Yeah. And you've done just that, though. I, like, I hope so. So... How do you go to that point? Like you're, you obviously the the automotive love is there. Yeah. And you're, you have this real heavy. There, there's obviously a cinematic quality about your work, which I love. Uh, that whole noir feel that you yeah. have, you, you kill that look. I mean, dude, I spent my entire childhood in my bedroom with books about James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart and Edward G. Robinson and George really? Raft and all the great, yeah. you know. Well, that explains the, the hat then. It does. Okay. That's, all right. That's right. Yeah. This it is, makes this sense. Is my era. I love that that 30s 40s thing. And, uh, you know, after I lost my hair, I got to wear a hat to keep from getting sunburned or frozen. So why not wear something cool? cool one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, those are cool. This is, see, at least yours turned into something marketable. My, <laughs> my, my hours and hours spent pouring over, like, adult magazines. And then as I got older and dove deep into depression, like, my addiction to you porn hasn't really found its way into my it's, artwork it's, yet. It's, it's, all it's done is reveal itself in personal I've pleasure. I've seen some, That's of your, all. Uh, yes. some of your scribblings, and they're pretty impressive. <laughs> in, the, in his sexually induced stupor? Right, right. They're impressive. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so, okay, where are we going with this show? <laughs> so when you first started out painting, where did you, your very first works, did you think you were going to go the direction you did? Or no. is this like an evolution of that? It was or an evolution. I said to my wife, I said, you know, I don't paint like Keith Wiesner. I don't paint like Tom Fritz, you know? And, I, and, she, and my wife, in her, in, in, she said something very simple but very profound. She says, paint what you like. Well, I had to pause and go, what do I like, you know? Well, I like, I like American cars, restored, hot-rodded, customized. I'm learning to love uh, foreign foreign cars, Delahaye's, beautiful yeah. br British uh, British sports cars. I'm learning to love all that stuff. But my initial love is early, you know, 30s, 40s, American cars, hot rods, custom cars, stuff like that. But I'm also, like I said, crazy about old gangster movies, film noir, detective films, stuff like that. And I thought, you know, I want to, I'll just mash up those things that I like and, and see what comes out. Because I spent like nine months painting before I even showed my paintings to anybody because I didn't know if anyone was going to even respond to them. And then uh, I had, uh, I was in my studio and a friend of mine who's an actor, Paul Dooley, he's, uh, he was the dad in 16 Candles, the dad in Runaway oh. Bride, oh, Wimpy yeah. and Popeye. Okay. Well, he was in my studio and he, he was looking at a piece I have called Roscoe Said Goodbye For Me. It's a 53 Cadillac with a girl and a gun and uh, the guy's fedora on the ground. And he go, he looks at it, he rubs his chin, and he goes, very car noir. And I go, I'm stealing that from you. And so that became my website, Car Noir. Very nice. That. See, and I love it. All your stuff tells a story, and you manage it. And any good story that can be told in one frame is right. fantastic. That's that's the hard part. I always say that art is editing, and some you know young inexperienced artists artists they try to put too much in it sometimes you know oh aren't I cool I put the reflection in the side of the car and you can see me photographing it and it's like no et you need to edit and you know once you start editing you you realize okay what do I need to tell the story I'm trying to tell and that even goes for pieces of cars like uh you know I've got a I've got a front end of a of a like a 38 Hudson beautiful like waterfall style grill and that's all it is it's just the front end of this car well Yes, the entire car is beautiful, or, or a 39 Lincoln Zephyr. The entire car is beautiful, but I want the viewer to pause for a moment. The story I'm telling is the story of the grill. This piece is, is beautifully designed in its own right. Yeah. Yes, the whole car is beautiful. Yes, I could paint the whole car, believe it or not. But I want you to take a moment and just look at how beautiful this is designed, you know? Wow. So that's kind of, kind of the evolution I'm on right now, is thinking of the car as graphic design almost. Fantastic. And that's it. That's a weird. It's weird to do that shift in your head. Yeah. Like, I paint a lot of abstract stuff. You've been witness to what's in my house. But yeah. Some of them you put wheels on. Right, most of yeah. So. And it was just oh, funny wait, though. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't hear. I'm it. sorry. That was rude of I me. I didn't hear it at all. That was just terrible. <laughs> the Oscar Mayer people are gonna love that next. One. <laughs> but um, no, like having having to work sometimes where to go from a creative standpoint into especially like the graphic design thing where the rules are very rigid. Right. And. It's funny because, I mean, you can break a lot of rules in painting 
and kind of get away with it a little bit more than graphic design. Right. Although as things have progressed, like through the 60s and 70s, it, it kind of... But Sometimes the rules go out the window. Right on. Yeah. And it's really cool that you, you approach it that way. Because that, that kind of, that mind-melding thing that goes on. That's really I cool. I try to do the same thing with art that I do, did with acting, which is see what the other guy who's going up for the part you're going up for is doing. Right. And try to do the opposite or something different, something out of left field, you know. So see, that's come in there to play a gangster. You pull Kermit the Frog. Yeah, that's well, we're I, kidding, but it's true. I, the, I know, but that, that we think it's fresh because I think I think if you're sitting in a casting room and you see 50 guys come in, yeah, and they're and, all and like, you look at him and you go, that guy's perfect for this role. Yeah. He, if I was going to cast it, I'd cast that guy. He looks yeah. just like this character. And then you hear them go in the room and audition, and you hear, oh man, they took the easy choice. They made the easy actor yeah. choice. So then I would always try to make a hard choice. Sometimes you could pull it off. Sometimes you couldn't. But when you did, you could see the people who had just heard it for the 50th time yeah. look up and, you know, oh, it's something yeah. new. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah. And that's what I try to do with my art, too, is not just do what every other artist, I think, would do. Yeah. You, you know? want to be predictable. Also. Yeah. And now, back it up, because this is something that kind of stuck in my head, where you said you started off, you painted for about nine months before you showed anybody. Yeah. Stuff. And that kind of drifted then into talking about younger and experienced artists. Yeah. Now, question for you. That first nine months, did you ever fall into that trap where of nine months of painting, you spent eight months on one painting? And, cause, I mean, some guys do this, like, they'll, they'll go in, they'll go, I'm just going to paint for six months. And in six months, I have half a painting done. You're going... No, because um, I've done that. And I, I have, we've as an you know you know as an artist, you have paintings that you don't show anybody. You know, they just didn't work out the way you'd hoped they would. You know, right. so we all have, a, have kids like that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait, can we edit that? Yeah, we it's don't like want them to hear VC that. Andrews we don't want the wife of. to hear that either. <laughs> but uh, no, so um, I paint pretty quick actually, I, but I do a lot of preliminary work. So I'll do color studies and sketches and a lot of different designs before I ever touch paint to canvas because. We all know that anyone who's painted, if you run into a problem in your painting and you keep trying to fix it, the painting will get muddy and it'll lose its oh, freshness. Yeah. And if you take that painting and set it aside, you keep looking at it and you keep thinking you can fix it. And you can't. It, once you've killed the freshness, you've killed the freshness. So I got to the point where I would take a razor blade and slice the canvas because oh. I know I would just keep going back to it. But... Once you've figured out the problem, you can start a fresh one and you sail right through the problem part because you've fixed it already on another piece. Yeah, right and you have, a, you have a piece that has a freshness. It's got an energy to it. There's, it's not muddy in any way, you know. So that, that would be my advice to anyone working on a piece that's not working. Start it over. Get a fresh canvas. Slice it with a razor blade. Wow. Because human nature is, oh, I can go back and fix yeah. that. You're never going to fix it. It's always going to look muddy. I'm thinking. I'm going to give you my this is my million dollar idea for the episode. Sweet. Keep. Do you keep all your sliced canvases? I know it's a weird thing because you know using the stretcher strips when you're an artist is you reuse the hell out of those. That's right. But I always thought, what if you took all the old ones and started stitching them back together, and you come up with like a Halloween show? It's like Franken canvas. That's awesome. We have these all stitched back there. There was an illustrator back in like the early 1900s. His name was Joseph Leyendecker. He created. he did. He was like the first guy to do like the New Year's baby and uh, he, very famous illustrator of his time of the golden era. In fact, he was Norman Rockwell's hero. And when Norman Rockwell oh, wow. started, he painted just like Lion Decker. Well, when Lion Decker died in like the 1950s, um, his partner would take his old studies and cut them up and like because he would do like panels with like three faces. He's doing a study of like uh, you know a general or something. He'd do three faces because he was working out his technical things that he needed to work out to right. create the painting well this his partner would cut out the faces and sell them individually at garage sales <laughs> yeah so there is a precedence for what you said now sewing them back together i've never seen that's a great idea that would idea. be kind of cool it'd be like a different kind of collage thing not yep. quite like jess uh, did you ever see jess's artwork uh this is hardest uh it's a guy he worked actually on uh, the manhattan project and went off and started doing like collage work. Oh, uh, let me let me send you some stuff when we get awesome. home. Yeah, I'll send you some stuff to look at. It's uh, I got this whole infatuation now with this guy. His name is Jess. Jess. Yeah, I can't think of C H E S S or J E S S. J E S S. Okay. I can't think of his full name right now on the spot to yeah, save my to life. I will do this though. Check it out. It's um, it's just super cool. Um, 
it was a book out. It's called The Grand Collage. It's just weird. Look at it. It's so bizarre. Okay. And the same guy who used to take full tubes of paint and like build up the canvas to like three inches thick. Really? Oh, yeah. So when he started mentioning muddy, I was like, oh, my God, we're on the same. <laughs> yeah. Paint's but, too expensive for me to do oh, that. Oh, yeah, I couldn't imagine that. <laughs> well, you could do that with one of your residual checks from. Uh, oh, hey, man. Oh, uh, when our audience is done Now watching. we're just bragging. <laughs> do a cutaway of your paintings. <laughs> oh, man, like Fordite. <gasps> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you don't do a painting of a Ford <laughs> and cut it open like Fordite. <laughs> this would be... <laughs> And it just went stupid. Uh, Somebody's going to be mean, listening stupid? to it. No, I don't know. Somebody, Fortnite is not stupid. and Pretty awesome. Fortnite is a... That's, that's a magnificent idea. I'm proud of you. Well, Fortnite rings. <laughs> yeah. They even make that? Fortnite jewelry? Oh, yeah. There are people make Damn Fortnite it. jewelry all the time. Sorry, Damn man. You missed the boat on that one. Damn it. How about a full set of Fortnite dentures? Nice. But then you got to be a rapper. But would you do the colors left to right or top to bottom? Yes. What would you do? Both. You can have multiple sets and switch them out while you're talking to people. (laughs) (laughs) This reminds me of those Monty Python, the buffer art, where the guy would come on his teeth and be dancing. (laughs) Or or put little servos in each one so they spin around. And they're they're facing different ways each time. Dude. Okay, we got to get together with we 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 just need a really out there kind of dentist. Yeah, because it's going to take a certain. You realize someone's patenting this as we speak. Probably, it's over. We need to find either a dentist who's really free with his thoughts, or somebody that we can clang over the side of the head with a <laughs> you know with a shovel when he walks outside. I'm going. It's a great idea. I mean, we in. can clang him on the side of the head with a shovel, steal his degree off the wall, and take it to our garage and stick it up. Oh yes, yeah, welcome in. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm now a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> You can act your way out of that one. This will be great. I'm an ordained dentist. <laughs> but when it's real life, it's not acting. It's more like undercover. Oh. An ordained oh. dentist because he's got to pray for you while he's working on yes. you. <laughs> wow. Okay. So now you brought up an interesting thought too. Okay. I hate doing this. I love you. Dude, this is so fun talking to you. Well, I'll stop then. We're done. <laughs> that was fun. And here we are from. It's over. Uh, no, but um, last big thing that's on my mind, really. When you get into, uh, as far as like acting and being undercover, do you do you experience that weird right brain shift when you go into paint? For you, is it like, is there anything similar to when you act? Do you draw on the same thing, or is it two totally different worlds? Uh, nope. No, I I don't. It's it's two different animals, really, because okay. it is creative. And the thing that I really liked about acting was that it was a uh, it was a creative art form that you did with other people. You know, as an artist, we all sit in our studios by ourselves 99% of the time. I mean, you know, we do if we do six shows a year, we're out amongst we're out amongst people <laughs> six times a year, you know. Otherwise, we're sitting in our studio by ourselves. And I'm a very social person. My wife says I'm a social butterfly, if you hadn't guessed. And no. so the acting was a creative thing that I enjoyed that I was able to do with other people. And let me tell you, when you get in doing a scene, with a with a with a good actor, it challenges you to be good, and it just things start clicking Feeding and humming. Each other. That's right, and yeah. bouncing. Especially yeah. if that other actor is generous and wants the scene to be good. Yeah, there's you always run into selfish actors who it's all about them. They just want it to be about them, and the scene never clicks as well. You know, but uh, I, I hope that answered that question. If I ramble, just no, slap no, me, it did. It, it was great. I was no. I was just really interested in the creative process. I mean, yeah. to me, I love how. S- Everybody kind of approaches it differently. Yeah. Like, Brad, we, we talked a million times about how you approach a creative project. And you and I, we seem to come to things kind of the same way. And then we duke it out halfway right. through because you don't put drop shadows in the right way. Yeah. And the right way. Yeah. You talking about that ego thing? We were talking about that earlier. Oh, now it's all about you, right? I see. I see how this is. No, You're like an old married couple. Without the fun stuff. Now it got weird. Or maybe you do have the fun stuff. I don't know. <laughs> then it got really weird. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I, I seek let, the let's, please. Let's see you act your way out of this, funny man. No. <laughs> Can't do it. Funny man. <laughs> Mr. Sable man. Mr. Sable. <laughs> I was just interested, though, in how, how it works for you. Because, I mean, mentally sometimes, I mean, like I find if I'm working on a, like a car design, my mental approach to it is far different than if I'm doing a logo. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's night and day. 
And I mean, and if I have to, you know, be asked, you know, are you enjoying this job? And I go, yes, that's acting for me. And that's a whole different part of my brain. But too. you know, the logo thing, you're generally doing for someone else. And there's a list of parameters you have to work oh, within, yeah. which does, it does have the, the upside of stretching your creative muscles because you got to make things work that shouldn't work. And the car thing, you know, it's like when you have all the freedom in the world to do anything you want, sometimes that can be debilitating. You want someone to give you some restrictions because right. then it, it does make you flex that creative muscle. But and it was it's kind of the same way with the acting, the, the painting and the acting. Those will be some similarities. You know, you get up and you have a script. The writer had an intent. Your part is only in there because it serves a purpose to the story. You know, and so you, if you understand that your what that your character has a purpose and what the purpose is, then you understand more of how to do the scene. Well, it's the same thing with with art. What is the story you're trying to tell with this piece of art? Are you doing it as a uh, preliminary piece of art for a builder? Well, that's one kind of story you're telling. Are you doing it to uh, evoke emotions of nostalgia? You know, um, over over what has been a very important uh, element to our society, the automobile. I mean, you know, going back to the f maybe earlier than even the 30s, we courted in cars, you know, we dated in cars, we got married and went off on our honeymoons in cars. The yeah. cars were very important, yeah. at least to our generations. Right. It seems like with the younger people, it doesn't mean freedom like it meant to us. Yeah, it's just transportation. Right. Yeah, it's but for us, it's a place to, get, place to go to soccer practice. Exactly. Yeah. But for us, it was a symbol of freedom Absolutely. and independence and, and growing into adulthood. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. When you talk to a kid that's 14, what do you want to do when you're 16? I want to get my license and get a car. Right. Nowadays, you like don't that get today. that same answer. Right. And when I first heard of that, I, I didn't understand it. It didn't yeah. compute with me because of what it meant to us you know and, and, and it dawned it every, on me it later that it doesn't mean that to them it, it really doesn't I, I know a lot of the generation now you've almost got to prod them to get your license you know? yeah let's go get it it's I remember as kids I mean the day you turned 16 was the day you were beating on your parents oh to, yeah to try to get your permit oh yeah and you before know? that you were like or, or, you were like dad can I take the car and he's like two more weeks nope yeah two more yeah. weeks and you oh, can take yeah. it by yourself exactly. you know I, I just drive around the parking lot right see just the problem the is my dad was uh, had a small insurance agency and so he saw all the uh, <laughs> uh, incident reports of the 16 year old kids running into block walls and so uh, when my I went when I went to get my license he's like you better go get a job first which was probably one of the most brilliant things he ever said because it made me go get a job right yeah and then you can afford things like registration insurance yeah back what, then. what's yeah. that yeah 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 true yeah what's that well, we're in arizona what's that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's more a suggestion yeah yeah it's, it's probably yeah, a it's good a, idea yeah to, to have yeah, a, you know, it's a recommendation yeah. yeah but don't tell me i gotta yeah. working on it or cramp my style That's yeah right. Hey they man, don't I'm even a free spirit. I'm a lone wolf. Yeah, they don't even ask you if you want uninsured motorists anymore. It's just <laughs> they don't even ask you. It's just part How of rude it. of them. Yeah, yeah, they don't even ask. <laughs> so used then, to be at one time you had to specify it. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, you I have need, to ask them to take it off your policy. Wait a minute, I need insurance for my car. Oh, oh that's right. I thought we were talking about something else. Uh, <laughs> no, we'll cover you. I got you covered in mine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Speaking of cars, though, you, sir, uh, you have quite the uh, the fine little machine. I do. I'm uh, not quite finished with it yet. I have a 1952 Hudson Pacemaker Coupe. It's a short wheelbase car, which is bitching. You know, it's perfect for that hat. It is. And actually, I can sit in the car and wear this hat, and it doesn't bump the roof oh, because wow. it was designed in an era for men to wear hats. Well, that's right. Ooh. That's why I chose it. If you could say that in an announcer voice, we could design in an era. Designed in an era when men wore hats. Thank in you. Very, by the way, we keep uh, all intellectual property. Uh, this you? is ours. That'll be appearing on stickers. <laughs> right. I'll have my great. agents send you my bill. And you'll but get your 17 cent check. My 17 cent check. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I want that every two months, <laughs> damn it. Man, now you're crunching us. I know. I'm just going to break the company. We're squeezed now. <laughs> Hey, so, Alex, you got 34 cents because, man, uh, I'm, i got to go to the bank again. again. Hey, why don't you just save those up till I've got like five bucks, then yeah, send it. Yeah, yeah. Three years from now, it'll be great. You're, you're the guy that goes to the ATM machine, deposit check, and they think you're taking one. You send a stack through that. <laughs> I, that I'll wear beer. the machine out. 
I'm just thinking, like, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm just seeing the guy standing behind him in line going, Ugh. Damn, that guy must be rich as hell. <laughs> He's man. here he just, again. He just deposited 40 checks. He keeps wearing he's the at the bottom. $18. He must be a mogul. Because <laughs> <laughs> he goes to the walk-up <laughs> ATM machine. <laughs> he just keeps feeding them. That guy must be loaded. <laughs> <laughs> I turn around like that's right. That's right. Three dollars. When he goes into the bank, it's like it's like it's like the DMV. Else, and the windows closed. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait, I got four more. <laughs> Jim Owens, ATM mogul. ATM mogul. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, how did you come into that car, though? Um, I had a Hudson in the '90s, and when I started moving around the country, I couldn't keep it. And I had to sell it, but I always wanted another Hudson. Uh, Cause I just I love orphan cars. I love Packards, Hudson, Studies, you know, all that kind of stuff. I like yeah. things that are different like that. And uh, not not to go dark, but my my dad got sick and died, and I was looking for something to keep my mind off it. And uh, I saw it come up on on uh, Craigslist, and I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna go look at this car. If it's in good shape, I'm gonna buy it. And I it was a rolling chassis. I knew it was a rolling chassis. But if the if the sheet metal was in good shape. I was going to buy it. And she was, you know, she said, oh, don't buy it because then you're just going to, you know, start buying parts and, yeah. you know, all that. And I said, no. Take it all apart. I said, no, yeah. if it's in good shape, I'm going to, I'm, I'm bringing it home. And she was cool. And she was like, okay. So I brought it home and uh, started working on it and met these two great guys, uh, Tim, Tim Allen, not the actor, and Mike Madden, both, both guys that live in Tennessee, both retired. One was a retired body man. The other guy was a retired uh, race car team manager and Porsche mechanic. Oh, wow. And between these two guys, Good friends to make. Yeah, they, between these two guys, there was nothing they hadn't done on a car. I mean, literally, Tim had had like taken a good half of a good front half of a car, good back half of a car, and welded them together and made one good car. You know, I mean, it's like nothing these guys hadn't done. And so, with their guidance, uh, I was like in school for three years. You know, and even stuff I thought I knew how to do, I'd go, "Hey, Mike, I'm going to do this." What do you think? And he'd go, yeah, that would work. Or maybe try it this way, you know? And they were very generous with their knowledge and their time. They'd, if, I, if I got into a rough spot I didn't know how to handle, they'd come over and help me. And we just became fast car buddies, you know? And, and they, they w helped me walk through building it. And I did everything myself. I, I did the upholstery myself oh. because my parents owned a slipcover company uh, sewing slip covers for, for people's couches and chairs. So when I was in art school, I was earning extra money sewing. So I learned how to sew. So it was your parents that made those <laughs> that, Oh, yeah. Don't hate. I know it's awful, but it put me through art school. So, okay. you know. But uh, so I, I sewed the upholstery myself. Were they the clear ones or were they cloth ones? <laughs> they, were, they were cloth. Uh, okay. Yeah. No plastic like grandma okay. had. Yeah, yeah. We could have done You were those but... people. <laughs> so, okay. so, you know, I really wanted something that I could learn on and learn how to do the things that I'd always wanted to take the time to do in that you do when you build a car from the ground up. Right. So, I mean, I bought this car, brought it home. We got the original uh, straight six cast iron boat anchor running, but it smoked like a chimney. And I thought, you know, I'm building a custom here. I want to drive the heck out of it. And I thought, I'm not going to spend the money to rebuild a 65 year old straight six. So I put the uh, ubiquitous small block Chevy 700 R4 Trans in it. I just I went and I bought a low mileage '89 Chevy van. I got the I got the tranny, the engine. I got the the the, the, the brake booster and the pedals out of it. So I've got power disc brakes on the front of it. Um, I did, I went through the engine. It didn't need a rebuild. It was clean, but we did the you know freeze plugs and all that kind of stuff and. Uh, put that in. Uh, it was it fit beautifully. All I had to do was make a cross member for the tranny. Um, it's a ma'am. <laughs> no, not that kind of tranny. But uh, and I even painted it in my driveway with my the help of my friend Tim. I painted it in my driveway. Sorry, you got to edit that out, right? No. But <laughs> but uh, I painted it in my driveway. Uh, sewing the upholstery. I sewed uh, the the cut and fit carpet myself about two months ago um, uh, altered the bumpers I've got a Kaiser overrider with bullets with the exhaust coming through the bullets so I learned how to weld oh, shape sheet cool. metal yeah, yeah. and yeah. so now I'm sculpting with the skills I learned building the car so I'm building sculptures way cool yeah there's some in my booth if you if you make it by you can check them out well, we gotta oh, go, we're coming over there we need to go to the booth if, cool. if it's cool if you would like to get some Absolutely. pictures oh, I mean I know, do. I know normally it's like don't take pictures of my booth but well no flash photography yeah Oh, don't do that. That's why I brought my friend Jesse. He takes him out back. 
Yeah. And, fl- and like flashes them. By the flashes them. Yeah. 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 Takes a picture with his belly button. That's camera. right. Fla- he takes them out back and flashes <laughs> them. <laughs> his shoe camera. <Perfect. laughs> No, he keeps his phone there. <laughs> like, like Maxwell Smart. That's right. Hey, there's a timely reference, huh? Yes. Good pull. Well yes. done. Thank you. Thank Holy you. Holy moly. Yes. Hey, those 60s TV references I'm the king of. I'm just wondering, how do you, I mean, you, how do you find, like, you know, the Kaiser bumper and everything like that at 17 cents? <laughs> it's memory. tough, but I'm a good negotiator. You're well played. You know, the guy wanted 500. Checks is what that cost. Yeah, that's right. I got a stack of checks that tall. I'll swap you for that Kaiser Overrider. <laughs> and you got you to gotta throw I, in the, bump, the bullets, though. Your checks are no good here. Right. The guy who has, like, he's your starting up, like, good. the residual check museum. It'd be awesome. <laughs> I should just frame them as a joke. You know, the lowest one. I think the lowest one I ever got was 10 cents. But if I get wow. one lower than that, I might just that frame it. That would be awesome. Oh. Yeah. That's the thing. You blow up and make a poster out of it. You frame it up. It's I like know. in the garage Take or something. Like, side of your like car the Ed McMahon <laughs> check size. <Yeah. laughs> there you go. <laughs> 10 cents. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. It's like, Pop James Owens has updated. House. You know I what? got 10 cents. Maybe I will. Next time I get one, Photoshop it. You know? Do it. And James Owens has updated, awesome. he's updated his profile picture. The glamorous world of show business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's some spilled mac and cheese on your shirt. It'll be great. <laughs> I'll wear an old stained wife beater. <laughs> That's the only kind I own. So. Yeah. <laughs> don't have any clean ones fine? anymore. They're all stained. That's right. So if they're not, stained. I put some stains on. There you go. Yeah. Sure. I don't want to feel out of place or no, overdressed. No, no, no. I need some mustard. <laughs> Honey, you got any more than pork and beans? Well, <laughs> 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 oh, come on, with your artistic talent, you could mix that. You could be like pork and beans. I know, but there's nothing like the real thing. Right. I am a method actor, you know. Yeah. Well done. Because, you know, you get hungry later, you just lick your tie. You know? <laughs> 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 Brewing something with your tie. <laughs> is that iced tea? I don't know. No, it's pork and bean soup. <laughs> oh, <my God>. It's <laughs> like transmission <laughs> fluid. I don't know what this. Well, there might have been some of that on there too. <laughs> Where was I yesterday? <laughs> Neckwear bouillabaisse. <laughs> <laughs> How many times you get to use the word bouillabaisse Never. on this podcast? Nicely played. <laughs> nice pull, my friend. Yeah, nicely played. <laughs> And they awesome. said I'd never go anywhere. <laughs> and they meant it. Scrap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Did I say that out loud? I got to nice. stop that. Definitely won't go what there the heck, fast. man? Why don't you stop me? I like it. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> not only going to keep that, I'm going to use it for the intro. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much time in it. I have to throw uh. this table. <laughs> like a John Wayne movie. Oh, my God. But, man, I don't want to tie you up too much. I want to have you back. Okay. For a full, real... Yeah. Well, we live so close to each other. I'll just come and crash on your couch, and we'll do it. Bring it on. Yeah. Right on. You me? Well, you've crashed on my couch. I have. Beware the dogs. There's dogs. I like dogs. The dogs like, like the dogs. Ca- the dogs like the couch. So just so you oh, know. Do they? Yeah, oh, you're yeah. sitting on their couch. Hey, my bladder's bigger than theirs yeah. is, so I'll mark <laughs> it myself. Jake has a bit of a spooning problem. <laughs> you'll you'll yeah. get used to it. Yeah, they like the couch. It's kind of a crazy way to wake up. It's like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're in my spot. Yeah. I see that. The scary thing is when you think it's the dog and it's Brian. <laughs> it's Brian dressed as a dog. Method acting. In his dog suit. He's one of, what do they call those people that go to those conventions? A furry. furry. A furry. <laughs> He's got a big, a big a like, giant furry. head on. You know? Scooby-Doo. Imagine to wake it up to that. Go. Go. Oh, I want to have a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> roll. And you didn't even bring me any Scooby snacks. Furry. You got them all for yourself. Just... Hope it away at your leg. It looks great. Ah, oh, dear. Oh. No. I hope I answered all your questions semi-coherently. Ah, you were great, man. <laughs> and man I, I, I feel bad now for waiting this long to have you, man. Ah, we'll do it again. I, I, dude, let's do this. Sweet. Let's make this a thing. I, we haven't laughed this hard in so long, man. Cool. You know what? I'll be back Thank in you. 45 minutes. Okay. Fair. Awesome. <laughs> Before you leave, <laughs> yeah. pick a color. you got to sign the table. Oh, all right. How about silver? Pick, pick a color, man. Groovy. Hi ho, silver. Should I print it so everyone knows who that is? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, my my signature is like a big swoosh. 
Just what, do it. What if Jimmy Olsen from Jimmy Super Olsen from Superman? Superman. Yes. <laughs> yep. Jimmy Olsen. I should have signed Chip Foose. <laughs> He'd sit down here and be like, everybody the, should sign Chip Foose. Everybody, everybody write Chip Foose. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on, guys. Thank uh, you. I had fine. a great time. Thanks, and man. I do look forward to doing it again. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yep. Look forward to having you. We'll have you someplace a little bit more quiet. A more, um, ooh, we'll do it. You know what? I'll record it.